you're attempting to build a three-dimensional reality, three spatial dimensions, and you want that to have changes in it. You want to have animation in three spatial dimensions. So one naive approach at first would be, well, what is the simplest shape in three dimensions? The simplest pixel of three-dimensional reality would be the three simplex, which is just the common tetrahedron. So we imagined um, different patterns of tetrahedra and wanted to link up with a mathematical um, justification for how to use tetrahedra. And we realized that because E8, which is um, both an algebra and it has an, anal an analogous crystal form uh, or lattice form, we realized that if you slice um, a section out of E8 and you project it to a lower dimension, like four dimensions, you get a quasi-crystal made of nothing but regular three-dimensional tetrahedra in four dimensions. And they're arranged in this beautiful way that allows syntactical freedom on how you can arrange the tiles within rules. So it's a language or a code uh, made of geometric shapes called a quasi-crystal. And because the E8 crystal in eight dimensions from which the four-dimensional quasi-crystal language is, is encoding, right, in eight dimensions encodes unification physics, according to the work of a lot of other groups, um, then we realize that one can recover or unfold the unification physics in the lower dimensional projection of a higher dimensional thing. So the higher dimensional thing encodes realistic unification physics, and the lower dimensional thing also allows you to uh, unpack or recover the, the higher dimensional information in the same way that people would view me as a flat two-dimensional image if they cover one eye and look at me. It's just flat, like a National Geographic photograph. But in their mind, they subconsciously just extrude me into three dimensions and interpret what they're seeing. They, they, have, you, they have a knowledge that my nose is closer to them than my ears, even though all they're really seeing is a flat two-dimensional image. So this is an analogy to say that mathematically, one can recover the information of a higher dimensional thing, like the E8 lattice that encodes unification physics, from the lower dimensional mosaic tiling code in four dimensions, which is uh, a quasi-crystal. Is it sort of naive to say <clears throat> that reality is eight-dimensional and we experience it in a three-dimensional way that it encodes that eight-dimensional reality? I don't think that reality is eight-dimensional. I think that it's uh, best to be conservative and guess that it is what it appears to be until you realize that there is no theory using what you think it appears to be that will work. And it turns out that with quasi-crystal mathematics, we can have our cake and eat it too. We can say that the mathematics of a higher dimensional crystal and its related algebra defines the gauge symmetry unification physics that unifies particles and forces, but so too does its lower dimensional projection. So we have this lower dimensional code, this quasi-crystal mosaic tiling structure, and the fact is that embedded in this lower dimensional object is the information of this abstract, non-physically realistic, higher dimensional thing. And in this way, we have our cake and eat it too, because we can say, well, we don't have to admit that philosophically or ontologically reality has hidden higher dimensions just because the math implies 
that it relates to, to higher dimensions because quasi-crystals in lower dimensions encode the higher dimensional information. All we measure is three spatial dimensions. Why even bother with describing? Let, so let's say that 3D reality is this quasi-crystal structure. Why do we have to even say that it's related, that it's uh, mathematically projected from, from an eight-dimensional crystal? Like, why define a quasi-crystal by its eight-dimensional? Okay. okay. So, the fact is that one can mathematically express the unification physics with the lower-dimensional quasi-crystal, or Say, use 3D and not and, and 4D or 8D without saying lower or higher because it's confusing. I think. Okay. Well, I, I didn't get yeah okay, but you're gonna have to eventually cut in if this was a line of thought. You'd have to have cut in how we get from 4D to 3D. I will explain. Because I because no, I I'll, I'll, oh you're gonna of course of course. Yes. All right. So. So the fact is that unification physics can either be based on the mathematics of a higher dimensional algebra or crystal, or the projection which transforms it. So when you project something, you transform it, right? So if you have a cube and you can feel it in your hands and then you hold it up to the sun and project it to a shadow on the sidewalk, the shadow has different angles and different lengths of lines than the cube. It's been transformed. But if you knew about the geometry of how to um, unpack or recover the information of the full cube from the shadow, then that's, that's an easy problem. So one can focus on a mathematical approach that only uses the higher dimensional crystal and see how far they can go. Okay. Or one can take the transformation of the higher dimensional crystal to the lower dimensional space and see how far they can go. There's an important caveat though. The quasi-crystal, the shadow or the projection, it's a three-dimensional shadow of an eight-dimensional crystal slice. This quasi-crystal that we work with is actually more complicated than the higher dimensional crystal mother from which it was born. And the reason for this is because it is really a child or a product of two parents, the mother crystal and the father, if, if we can use this analogy, projector. So the projector is a special object. It's an angle, really, but it's a hyper vector, a hyper projector. And that hyper projector combines with the hyper crystal mother, and the two together act as coefficients to produce a product, where products are generally greater than the sum of the two coefficients that created them. And so the quasi-crystal itself is a richer mathematical object, a more complicated mathematical object, than either the father projector, the hypervector, or the mother crystal. And furthermore, it is distinctly a language, a uh, mosaic tiling language in 3D.